Good morning, brethren. We continue with our series of the topic, the victory of the cross. And today I want us to look at the subtopic, the finished work. Let us pray. Lord, we don't take it for granted that we have an opportunity to hear your voice this morning. We know there are many others that would also wish to hear you speak clearly to their hearts. But because of infirmities, they may be sick, they may be living in areas where the gospel cannot be spread easily, cannot be shared easily. And therefore, we thank you that you've given us these few minutes this morning to hear your voice. Use me only as an instrument, dear Lord, to speak that deep truth that you may wish that we understand this morning, that we comprehend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So there are four things I would wish to point out that Jesus finished on the cross. John chapter 19, verse 30 says, When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. At Easter, which we celebrated not too long ago, Jesus went through the agony of his suffering, enduring all the pains of hell. He has cried out from the depths, but now he's announcing his victory. He moves into death, not defeated, but triumphant. It is finished. So what did Jesus finish? Number one is the long night of his suffering. John described how someone held up a sponge soaked in vinegar on a stick. And the apostle says, when Jesus had received the drink, he said, it is finished. The great theologian Matthew Henry says, when he had received that last indignity in the vinegar they gave him, he said, this is the last. I'm now going out of their reach. This was the end of his excruciating suffering. Jesus knows suffering from the inside more than anyone has ever known it. But he is not suffering now. He's done with that. It is finished. He's not in the grave either. He's at the right hand of God the Father where he intercedes for us. Now, that is of massive importance for us because a suffering world needs a savior who knows about suffering. A savior who is overwhelmed by suffering, a savior who remains in suffering, is of no use to us. If a savior is overwhelmed by suffering, then that's it. How do we call him a savior anymore? We can only trust and have confidence in one who has gone through the suffering, the deep suffering, and eventually he was able to overcome it. We need a savior who has triumphed over suffering. That is what we have in Jesus. He was plunged into indescribable suffering, but he was not overcome by it. He came through it, and he triumphed in it. The next is the full course of his obedience. Remember why Jesus came into the world. 
The Son of God became a man to live the life you and I would have to live in order to enter heaven. Jesus lived the perfect life. There was no sin in him. The night before he died, he was able to say to his father, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And this is in accordance with John chapter 17, verse 4. Spangion, another great theologian, says, Examine the life of the Savior from Bethlehem to Calvary. Look minutely at every portion of it, the private as well as the public, the silent as well as the spoken parts, and you will find that it is finished. It is complete. It is perfect. Jesus said, I have not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Every commandment of God was fulfilled in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Throughout his life, Jesus Christ loved God the Father with all his heart, with all his mind, with all his soul, and his strength. And indeed, he did love his neighbor as himself. In fact, he's the only person who has ever done it so perfectly. Jesus' perfect life of obedience was now complete and he was about to lay it down. And so he said, it is finished. Thirdly is the decisive battle with his enemy. The life of Jesus was a life of suffering and also it was a life of obedience and it was also a life of conflict with our great enemy, the devil. Look at the world today and you may want to ask the question, where does evil come from? Why do so many marriages fail? Why do woes keep happening? Jesus spoke with absolute clarity about Satan or the devil. Confronting the devil was the first act of Jesus' public ministry. The Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And throughout his ministry, we see Jesus casting out evil spirits, demons, that were holding human lives in bondage. So the story of this conflict goes back to the beginning of the Bible. Satan tempted the man and the woman and led them into sin that caused them to lose the joy of the paradise of God. They got the knowledge of evil and came under the power of the evil one. And that has been our story ever since. It is the explanation of what we see in the world today. What we see on electronic media, what we read in newspapers on a daily basis, what we see on social media, you know, a wanting lifestyle, people killing each other, you know, people devising ways and means to cause trouble to others. It's a wanting world. But God promised that a redeemer would come, saying to Satan, you will bite his heel, but he will crush your head. And this is in accordance with Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. What a picture. God's promise in Eden is precisely what happened at the cross. In Christ's death, he breaks the devil's power. Colossians chapter 2, verse 
15 says, having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphant, triumphant over them by the cross. When Jesus died, he went beyond the reach of Satan. Satan could no longer tempt him. The devil could no longer afflict him or cause him to suffer. When Jesus went into death, it was game over for the devil and game on for us. The decisive battle with the enemy had been won. And finally is the complete work of his atonement. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. He came to give his life as a ransom for many. And on the cross he says, it is finished. He has borne the guilt of our sins. He has endured the punishment of hell. The divine wrath has been spent on him. The justice of God has been satisfied in him. The perfect sacrifice has been offered. Complete atonement has been made. Hell has been vanquished. The condemnation has been removed. Now the Redeemer says, it is finished. Jonathan Edwards wrote, Though millions of sacrifices have been offered, yet nothing was done to purchase redemption before Christ's incarnation. So nothing was done after his resurrection to purchase redemption for men. Nor will there be anything more done to all eternity. What was done was perfect. The world was waiting for the coming of the Savior because of the trouble that was there. No kind of sacrifice that was offered by man was perfect. But the most perfect sacrifice was Jesus' death on the cross. And nothing else can be done other than that which he did in order to redeem man from sin. What can be added to Jesus' redemptive work, his death and resurrection? Brethren, it is finished. His long night of suffering is over. He is no longer on the cross. The full cost of his obedience is over. The decisive battle with his enemy is over. Christ finished the assignment that he was given. You and I haven't, but with him you will. So I urge you to take a moment and reflect on the life of Jesus and allow the Holy Spirit to change your life so that Jesus can be master and savior and king in your life, even today. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for that which you had to do at the cross, which was inevitable. Your desire was to save us from the way we had become entangled in sin and the authority that the evil one had over us. How I pray, dear Lord, that we may open our eyes and see that what you did is now finished. It's perfect in every sense of the word. And that it is now our responsibility to partake of that which you did 2,000 years ago, the redemptive work, that we may live a life that is abundant. You promised us abundancy of life when you walked on the face of this earth, that we can experience everything good spiritually, physically, and also emotionally. 
Help us this morning to realize this truth, that all that you did was complete. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.